Just when the generation of fathers who had lived through the war finally felt that life was regaining some sense of normality, a new phenomenon appeared in households up and down the country, one which would seek to undermine a dad's place as head of the household. They were called teenagers. But the children of the Blitz would soon grow up to become the rebellious teenagers of the 50s and 60s and would reject all that their fathers had fought for. I didn't want to be like him. I wanted to be the business, which was at the time, was the Teddy Boys. And he didn't want me to be. And the more he didn't want me to be, the more I wanted to be and the more I would be. Do you know what I'm saying? You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain. Too much of love drives a man insane. You broke my will, but what a thrill. The new idea of teenagers began with the emergence of the Beatniks and Teddy Boys in the early 1950s. On street corners, in coffee bars and in jazz clubs up and down the country, there was a revolution in music, fashion and idealism as the young turned their backs on the old way of life. In their search for identity and self-expression, the new teenage rebels questioned all that the previous generation believed in and all that their fathers had fought so hard to defend. And for the fathers who had come back from the war and had adjusted to life back in Britain and who had really begun to enjoy the sort of simple pleasures of life, suddenly that their teenage children were turning around and rebelling against them was quite a shock and, and sort of one in the eye for them because they, in some ways, even if subconsciously, felt that they'd made the world a safer place through the sacrifice that they'd made in the Second World War. What you ended up with, of course, is, is, is terrible clashes of personality between fathers and, and children because the fathers still wanted to have some control over the children and the children felt that they, they didn't owe their fathers anything. Peter Lambert was born in Birmingham in 1940. His father was a welder who spent his evenings in the local pub or asleep in his favourite armchair. And as a teenager, it was a lifestyle that Peter would violently reject. I didn't want to be like him because I didn't want any of that. I wanted, like, to be out with my mates. I wanted to dress how I wanted to dress, not how he wanted me to dress. I wanted long hair. I wanted these sideburns. I wanted to be me. I wanted to be the business, which was at the time, was in the 50s was the Teddy Boys. I wanted to be one of them. And he didn't want me to be. And the more he didn't want me to be, the more I wanted to be and the more I would be. Nobody could touch me, not even my dad. And I got to the stage where I sort of turned on him. And it ended up like we're rowing, and um, I ended up smashing a milk bottle on the fireplace and holding it up to him. It stunned him so much, probably to think that his, his own son could do something like that. Hoping to keep him out of trouble, Peter's father sent him away to live with his grandmother. But it wasn't long before Peter was back with his gang father and son would barely speak to one another for the next 25 years. After a series of petty crimes, Teddy boy Peter Lambert ended up in prison. It was an experience that for a while set him on the straight and narrow. In 1966, he married his girlfriend Judith. Although they had to elope to Gretna Green, after her parents disapproved of their courtship. Then, in April 1967, Peter became a father to daughter Debbie. Take my hand, little girl, and we'll go through life together. I used to look forward to coming home from work to see my little girl. I was proud to be a dad, 
you know, she was a lovely little girl. I used to rock her in her, like, this little rocking thing that she had, you know. Um, so take her down the, the, the wreck, the, the, the swings are, you know. Little girl, take my hand. I just wanted to be normal, normal dad. Go to work, earn me wages. Being a rebel then, at that particular time, was sort of fading out a bit. I was more interested in being a dad. And I, I used to love going out and pushing the pram. I'd do it because I wanted to do it. By the late 60s, many of Britain's young fathers were able to provide for their children as never before. They had more money, better housing, and a brighter future than their own fathers could have dreamed of. But for some of those who'd grown up with a rebellious streak, domestic bliss just wasn't enough. After several years of marriage and the birth of a son, David, Peter Lambert started to go back out with his old gang. Working away for much of the week and drinking with friends when he was back, it wasn't long before his marriage fell apart and he lost contact with his children. And although Peter took responsibility for the breakup, it still upset him deeply. Well, I, I used to go for a drink back then. I used to go for a drink and I'd get a few drinks in me and I'd start crying, wondering what my kids are doing, where they are, what they're like. I used to wonder, drowning in self-pity, if you like, you know, why is this happening to me? But I bought it on myself, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't uh, the ex-wife's fault, it wasn't the children's fault, it was mine. But there, were, there I was, sitting on buses, coming home from the pub, crying my eyes out because of my kids. Not only had Peter lost his children, he'd also lost contact with his own father. And like many of his generation, it wasn't until he got older that he began to question his past. In 1983, 25 years after leaving his childhood home, Peter arranged to meet up with his father. They spent the weekend together, and when Peter left, they vowed to make it a regular event. Two weeks later, Peter's father passed away. You know, I'm looking forward to, like, when I was going to see him again, I was going to tell him this, things that we hadn't spoke about, and I was going to talk about stuff that we'd missed out on. And... <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? And then, like, can't do it then. You can't tell him. And you think to yourself, oh, why didn't I say it when I saw him? Why didn't I say this? Why didn't I say that? You live and learn, don't you? Peter has now been married three times and has seven children. Over the years, and particularly after the death of his own father, he'd thought often about Debbie and David, the two children from his first marriage. Finally, he decided to search for them, and in 2003, 30 years after they were separated, he found them. We can't change the past, but we can try and make things better in the future. Uh, you, you know, I just love life now. I love life. I'm just. I'm just happy and I'm grateful for every day. I'm not sure whether I deserve it really because I've been a bit of a, a rascal, you know? But uh, it's just great and I'm just enjoying life, you know? I wouldn't change it for the world. I don't think so, you know what I mean?